the entrance antiphon. At your right stands the queen in robes of gold, finely arrayed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who made the mother of your Son to be our mother and our Queen, graciously grant that sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes evermore and the love of every one of you for one another grows even greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God regarding your endurance and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. This is evidence of the just judgment of God so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. We always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him in accordance with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. For great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens.
My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make con one convert, and when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, if one swears by the temple, it means nothing, but if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold sacred? And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who is seated on it. The Gospel of the Lord. So this morning, I would like to explain why liturgically we honor our Blessed Mother under the title of Queen of Heaven and Earth. And then, I think it behooves us once again to hear the distinction between what is a hypocrite and what is a sinner. And lastly, something practical for you to go away with, perhaps the virtue of courage or fortitude. Now, when it comes to the fifth glorious mystery, you recognize that it was just last Monday that we honor Our Lady, the Assumption of Our Blessed Mother. That would be the fourth glorious mystery. So today, still within the octave of the Assumption of Our Lady, we have the fifth glorious mystery of the Rosary the crowning of Mary as queen of heaven and earth. And Pope Pius XII, I think it was in 1954, he instituted this liturgically, although, albeit, Our Lady has been honored as queen of all the angels and saints for many, many years before that. And she, as being a co-redemptrix, because Christ would be our king, it is fitting that Our Lady would be our queen. Now, when it comes to the word hypocrite, I mentioned at morning assembly just now with the students that it's from the Greek, which means an actor. A hypocrite is an actor because he doesn't really believe in anything that he is doing. So he's just a good actor. An example I gave was, I think I mentioned how, let's say there's one among us here at Mass who's just a good actor. He comes in, goes through all the motions, standing, sitting, and kneeling. You wouldn't really know it, 
But he's here just because maybe his boss is here. He wants to impress his boss, and that's the sole re reason for attending Mass. This is hypothetical, okay? <laughs> no one here is doing that. Whereas the rest of us, we're sinners. So is the hypocrite. But we're sinners. We're, we struggle mightily to be good. We fail every day. That's why we come here to Mass, because we need God's grace. And so the difference is a sinner although he or she fails miserably every day, still strives constantly to repent and to be good. Whereas the actor just wants to appear good. He can care less. Okay, so that's the distinction. And this morning at the 6.30 a.m., I try to quote from Bishop Fulton Sheen some, a, a distinction, and I, I completely, completely muffled it. I completely... As I would say, I, um, I fumbled the ball. How about that? It couldn't come out of my mouth. So now I, I'm thinking 8.30. I'm a more awake individual now. So I think Bishop Fulton Sheen said, if you don't behave in what you believe, eventually you will believe the way you behave. Okay, so one more time. If you do not behave the way you believe, eventually you will end up believing in the way you behave, which is wrongfully, okay? So there you have it. We do not want to be accused of being hypocrites, although the non-believers are always saying that of us, that you Christians are a bunch of hypocrites, whereas I would say, yeah, I am a hypocrite, I'm a sinner, but I, I, at least I'm trying daily to repent, repent and to atone for my sins. So let's go to the last that last virtue that I really want to underscore. I tell these people all the time that it's, it's okay to be an actor insofar as if we have a good intention. So I act joyful every day, whether I feel it or not. You think I'm always feeling joyful? Not necessarily, but I act joyful because that's important for people to see, especially for little children. Okay, they always, they're, they're very quick at picking up our different moods. So I always say, act joyful, especially to the students, because it doesn't really matter how you feel sometimes. Parents, mommies have to change their baby's diapers. They have to go about doing chores, regardless of how you feel. Therefore, it is very important that students learn early on that it, sometimes when a parent asks you to do something, he, he or she isn't, they're not consulting your emotions and whether you feel like doing it or not. You just got to do it and will it. And so I'm thinking when it comes to courage. Okay, so this is my example. I've been using this line a lot just because I feel like a lot of what we have would be first world problems. We live in a country where we're so blessed. And since we have the luxury of even of time, we, we end up misusing it because we come up with crazy ideas and, and theories. So parents who send their children to St. John the Baptist and to Catholic schooling would not have to worry about this, whereas at a neighboring public school, that, that whenever they start, they're going to have to contend with all the agenda that's out there, right? Like choosing your pronouns, for example. And so I always say, if that is a first world problem, if you are working in the rice paddies, the rice paddies of Vietnam, you're hunched over in sweltering heat, believe me, you're not going to be thinking pronouns because that kind of silliness is not going to enter your mind because you're just focusing on staying alive and putting food on the table. If you're being chased by an Islamic militant who wants to, to kill you because you're an infidel, you're not thinking pronouns at that moment, right? So always recognize that we have first world problems. So let's be courageous this day. Let's be courageous in doing this by being able to confront yourself in the mirror, by looking at that sinner and by striving for repentance. Because we get distracted sometimes by thinking about our neighbor and other people. No, just focus on yourself. That's the courage I'm asking you to do. Focus on your faults, not other people's, because that's what the scribes and Pharisees would like to do. They look around, they notice how everyone is receiving communion, what others are doing. I think that's missing the point. A Christian, a sinner, 
starts with himself first. So as we go forth this day, may we imitate our blessed mother in her humility, because we want to be humble like her. So act, start by acting humble, and then your feelings will catch up to, with you. Trusting in the Lord's mercy, let us bring before him our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to help each one of us grow in holiness and strength as we journey together in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all nations, may the Lord foster an increased respect for human life. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, and we pray especially for Jason and Candy Carmona, for whom this Mass is being offered, may God's call echo in our hearts and guide our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, may God grant them eternal rest and peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And again, we pray especially for the repose of the souls of Stephen Hillis and Orion Gardner. God of truth and love, you have given us your son in order to show us the way to you. We ask that you hear these prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, and the power of God pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. Pain now in splendor.